Good evening, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the headlines of the hour. CPN Maui Center Chair Pushpa Kamal Dahal fails the floor test, receives only 63 votes in his favor, alleges Congress and UML of attempting to tamper with the Constitution. At least 17 dead in flood and landslides in the past 24 hours, seven from same family die in Pokhara, surge underway for passengers and two buses swept away by landslide in Naranga Pudling section. India's Supreme Court grants Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal bail in a money laundering case by the Enforcement Directorate linked to Delhi liquor policy. And the schedule for South Under-20 revised following the withdrawal of Pakistan tournament pushed by two days. CPN Maui Center Chair Pushpa Kamal Dahal has been relieved of his responsibilities from the capacity of Prime Minister after he failed today's floor test at the meeting of House of Representatives. In his 18-month period in power, Dahal had taken the floor test for the fifth time today. CPN Maui Center Chair Dahal did not receive the vote of confidence. Of the 258 members present at today's lower house meeting, Dahal received only 63 votes. As 138 votes were required to remain as the Prime Minister, Dahal has now been relieved from the position as 194 votes were cast against him while one lawmaker remained neutral. During his 18 months term, Dahal had formed coalition twice with CPN Yemal and once with Nepali Congress. While addressing the session, he said the government in its 18 months under his leadership had done an outstanding job but alleged that the opposition forces had plotted to remove him from the post in the name of national consensus. Various lawmakers from parties at the parliament put forth their opinions on the premier's floor test. Outgoing Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal has alleged Nepali Congress and CPN UML of making efforts to foil the constitution, saying CPN Maui Center had the largest contribution and investment in developing the constitution. Dahal expressed the commitment of leaving no stones unturned to protect the national charter. While seeking the vote of confidence at the parliament today, Dahal reiterated that CPN UML Chair K.P. Sharma Oli had deceived him. Presenting his proposal for the vote of confidence at the House of Representatives, outgoing Premier Dahal alleged Nepali Congress and CPN UML of reaching an agreement behind closed doors to amend the constitution. He also warned the two parties not to lead the country towards another round of violence in the name of constitution amendment. <laughs> Dahal also said that Congress and UML did not get together on their own and alleged that they were brought together by some other entity. He also raised questions regarding agreement behind closed doors for the two largest parties of the parliament. Congress Emaleka Simit Nepago Dabiola, Ami Afe Mileka Hu. To Sotte Wain. त्यो सत्य होइन तपाईहरुलाई कसैले मिलाएको हो किन मिलाएको हो किन मिलाएको हो घाम जतिकै छर्लङ्ग छ सिधै कांग्रेस एमालेको मिलेको भन्न लाज लागेर खासगरी एमालेका साथीहरुले झुटमुटमा राष्ट्रिय सहमतिको सरकारको बरको ओडी राख्नु भएको छ the Hall also alleged Congress and UML of coming together because of the fear of good governance. He claimed that the group of people fearing the investigations into corruption cases had brought the two entities together as well. Just let Tapala Jode go to Dor, who Susasan could Dor Susasan Kaim, Hundaizana Thalio, Bunny Dorle Tapala Jode Go Nale Jun Parisitima G. Currently Nepali Congress, Emale, Milno Kozunu Baikosa, Tapargo Sohakareko Sohmati, like Jantale, Onubodan Goreko, Chagi China. 
The outgoing Prime Minister claimed that the government led by him probed into large-scale corruption cases and was leading the nation in the path of development. He also said that he had ensured a justified share of power among the five major parties for the positions at five state entities and ensured the beginning of economic improvement of the country. At least 11 people have died after being buried by landslides at three different places in Kaski. District Police Office Kaski, DSP Basanta Kumar Sharma informed that seven people of the same family were killed by the landslide that buried their house in Purunchor, Tallokot Tadi in Pokhara metropolitan city 19 at around 10.15 p.m. last night. According to DSP Sharma, the deceased have been identified as 46-year-old Kul Bahadur Pariyar, his wife 43-year-old Mankumari Pariyar, his mother Lakshmi Pariyar, his daughter 15-year-old Prasanna Pariyar, 25-year-old son-in-law Ashmit Pariyar of Chitwan, 20-year-old daughter Prava Pariyar and 56-year-old Radhika Pariyar. Kul Bahadur's son Pawan Pariyar and local resident Kumar Pariyar were injured in the incident. Meanwhile, police informed that three people were killed by landslide in Bara Bise, Jainpur of Pokhara 32 when Arati Oja's house was buried by landslide. The deceased have been identified as 18-year-old Anita Oja, 11-year-old Anushka Oja and 9-year-old Pratik Oja. According to police, 80-year-old Maiti Kumari Gurung was also killed in a landslide in Madi Rural Municipality, Ward No. 11, while Om Bahadur Gurung has been rescued. Search operation for the two buses and passengers swept by landslide in Simal Tal of Chitwan under the Prithvi Highway is underway. Joint teams of Nepal Army, Nepal Police and Armed Police Force have been deployed for the search and rescue of passengers swept by the landslide. According to District Police Office Chitwan, two passenger vehicles were swept at around 3.30 this morning. According to Chitwan Chief District Officer Indra Dev Yadav, of the two buses, a bus of Ganapati Deluxe traveling from Kathmandu to Gore had 41 passengers. In another bus traveling from Birganj to Kathmandu, of the 24 passengers, 17 were local residents of Barsa, while seven others were Indian nationals. Chitwan District Police Office has said that a team of 75 security personnel from three security departments have been deployed for the search and rescue operation. Three passengers jumped out of the bus traveling towards Gore and saved their lives. They are undergoing treatment in Chitwan. Ministry of Home Affairs has directed to investigate the incident of two passenger vehicles being swept by landslides along the Prithvi Highway. The Ministry of Home Affairs has directed to investigate the matter as the passenger vehicles were swept during the landslide, which occurred while vehicles were prohibited from plying along the Prithvi Highway from 10 p.m. Wednesday night until 3 a.m. As construction works were underway, public vehicles were prohibited from plying the road section for the period of five hours each night. However, a meeting held at the Home Ministry, including the Chiefs of Security Departments, decided to probe the matter as two passenger vehicles had reached Naran Ghat at 3 a.m., while other vehicles were also seen operating along the road section. The meeting also decided to halt vehicular movement along the road sections, where the Meteorological Forecasting Division has issued red alerts. <laughs> वंचित गर्न पर यात्रा गर्न दिनै भएन मेन चाहिँ जो जो गाडी चलाउने गाडी ओनर अथवा चाहिँ नि त्यहाँको कन्डक्टर अथवा ड्राइभर अथवा यातायात व्यवसाय जो यातायात रिलेटेड हुनुहुन्छ उहाँहरुले चाहिँ नि टिकट लिनु पर्यो र चाहिँ नि ठाउँ ठाउँमा चाहिँ हाम्रो सुरक्षा कर्मीहरुले चेक पनि गर्न पर्यो द होम मिनिस्ट्री हैज अल्सो अर्ज एभ्रीवन टु ट्रैभल थ्रु रोड आफ्टर कन्सिडरिंग द वेदर कन्डिसन्स According to the ministry, at least 17 deaths have been reported in the past 24 hours. A couple has died after being buried in landslide in Magdi's Dhawalagiri rural municipality. According to district police office, incessant rainfall triggered the landslide. The deceased have been identified as 65-year-old Tul Prasad Nyopani and his wife 49-year-old Balkumari Nyopani. Their house was located in an isolated area which was buried by landslide. Water level has increased at the Gandak Barrage in Triveni of East Nawalparasi. According to officials at the barrage, the water level has reached 290,000 cusack. The danger level at the barrage is set at 300,000 cusack. Incessant rainfall has been identified as the reason for the increase in water level. 
The Department of Hydrology and Metrology has urged the local residents to remain alert about the flood in Narani River, which could sweep arable lands and settlements. The Met Division has also urged all the local residents along the river banks in East and West Nawalparasi to remain alert and seek refuge at safer locations. It is time now for our segment Public Pulse, where you text us with your opinion. The question is why have industrialists hesitated to pay fees despite using dedicated and trunk lines? Your options are A. Injustice from authority, B. Indifferent industrialists, and C. Follow the directives. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Time now for international update. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal got a big relief from the Supreme Court of India as it granted him an interim bail. Kejriwal had challenged the arrest made by the Enforcement Directorate ED in the court. In the same case, the joint bench of Supreme Court Justice Sanjeev Khanna and Dipankar Datta sent the case to the full bench after granting interim bail. The judge's bench decided to grant interim bail to Kejriwal till the completion of the full bench hearing. The Supreme Court has decided to send the case to a full bench to decide whether Kejriwal's arrest is necessary or not as per the provisions of Section 19 of the Money Laundering Act. On 25th of June, Kejriwal was arrested by the CBI under the Prevention of Corruption Act in the liquor policy case, even though he was granted interim bail by the Supreme Court in the money laundering case, he will not be able to come out of jail immediately. To get out of jail, Kejriwal will have to go to court against the CBI's arrest. He is currently in the judicial custody of the CBI. It is said that hearing against the CBI's arrest will be held in Delhi High Court on 17th of July. Kejriwal was arrested by the ED in the liquor policy scam case on the 21st of March. Now, Australia has said today that it had arrested a Russian-born married couple on espionage charges, alleging the woman, who was an information systems technician in the Australian Army, sought to access defence material and send it to Russian officials. The Australian Federal Police, AFP, has said the woman, who is 40 years old, travelled to Russia and instructed her husband in Australia to log into her official account to access material related to Australia's national security though no significant compromise had been identified yet. They will appear in a court on Friday after being charged with one count each of preparing for an espionage offence, which carries a maximum penalty of 15 years in jail. The charges are the first under new laws introduced six years ago. The couple has been living in Australia for more than 10 years, with the woman getting Australian citizenship in 2016 and her husband in 2020. The schedule for South Under-20 Championship has been changed following the withdrawal of Pakistan from the tournament. The tournament will now begin two days later on 18th of August. With the exit of Pakistan, Nepal will now have to play just two matches. Nepal is in Group A alongside Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. Pakistan was in the same group. Nepal will play its first match against Sri Lanka on 18th and second match four days later against Bangladesh. Group B has India, Maldives and Bhutan. The group stages will have five matches in round-robin format. Top two teams from both the groups will enter into the semi-finals slated for 25th and 26th of August in Dasrath Stadium. The All Nepal Football Association has taken 40 players for closed camp training for the tournament, which will begin from tomorrow. That is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.